Welcome to lesson two. If you're joining us from lesson one, congratulations on surviving your anatomy. Future is looking bright. What we're going to do in lesson two is cover the fundamentals of chemistry. Something that every anatomy and physiology professor must decide in their course is how far to go into the chemistry section. What I mean by this is that in lesson two, we're going to cover inorganic chemistry, which takes a year and labs to go through in inorganic chemistry. We cover organic chemistry, which again takes a year to go through for the lab and the lecture, and then two years of therapy afterwards. And then we have physics, which again is another year long course with lab, and nutrition, which can be a semester course. This presents an interesting problem to the anatomy professor because we have to decide how far down the rabbit hole we need to go. So in this section, believe me, we are going to go very fundamental, very overview of these topics. If you need more information about chemistry or more information about physics, then I highly recommend a gentleman that I used to teach with, had the pleasure of teaching with, Mr. Kazi. Mr. Kazi has a collection of physics videos and chemistry videos that are simply the best that I've seen out there. And that's including every place that I've seen and I've had to do a lot of searching. Check out those videos if you're gonna be in chemistry or physics or if you need to know more about these topics. They're phenomenal, they're on YouTube and they're completely free. But let's get back to what we're gonna talk about now. We're gonna begin about or begin talking about matter. Matter is defined as anything that takes up space, i.e. has a mass. Mass is a interesting concept for students because most students equate mass and weight as being the same thing, when in fact it's not. Mass is the measurement of how much space something occupies. Weight is something slightly different. Before I tell you what the difference is, I like to give this analogy that helps illustrate this point. Imagine for a second that you are stuck in a two-door car, very small, compact car that has two doors in it, and you're in the back seat. Okay, no big deal. Okay, sit in the back seat. But in comes six huge professional football players. I don't mean the quarterback or the kicker. I'm talking about the guys on the front area and the front line whose job it is is to block the other guys coming over, the big guys, all right? The big guys who start at about 300 pounds, those guys. And you're in the car with six of them. So you're gonna be sitting there like this, hard to breathe because there's no room, you can't breathe, there's no room, my body's crushing you. We take the car and we magically transport it to the moon. Everyone's still alive, let's magically transport it, okay? And we bring you to the moon. Are you still crushed? Are you still squished for space? Yeah, yeah, you're still having a hard time because there's no more room. Does the car weigh the same, however? Does the car weigh the same on the moon that it did on planet Earth? The answer to that is no. So if you're still squished for space on the moon or on Earth, but the car doesn't weigh the same, then there's a difference somewhere, and the difference is gravity. Weight is gravity's effect on the mass, while mass is, again, the measurement of how much space something takes up. We have three states of matter. There's a fourth one, but we're not worried about it for A&P. The three states are solids, liquids, and gases. Solids, at the macroscopic level, we can see with our eye, there is a definite shape and it occupies a definite volume. At the molecular level, the particles are very close together and do not move much. So a solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. A block is a block. A Lego is a Lego. It will be the same shape. It will occupy the same space. Liquids are different. They have a definite volume, but no definite shape. They'll take the shape of the container. To help illustrate the example of liquids, I like to use a fluid. But on bump. This is a bottle of water, and there is supposedly 16.9 fluid ounces in it. Now there's a little less because I've been drinking it. But there's 16.9 fluid ounces in it. What is the shape of the fluid? It's the shape of the bottle that it's in. Okay? In class, I like to take my drink and I say, okay, guys, ladies. 
If I take this 16 fluid ounce water and it's bottle shape and I pour it into a purse or a backpack and I grab the person's backpack and I, I don't actually pour it, I say, what shape will it take? Well, besides having an angry student, the shape of the liquid will now be backpack shape or, or purse shaped. The liquid fluid will take the shape of whatever you put it in, but it will still be 16.9 fluid ounces. So the volume remains constant, 16.9 fluid ounces. The shape will change. It will change to whatever you put it into. Gas has no definite shape and no definite volume. It will assume the volume of whatever container you put it in as well as the shape of whatever container you put it into. At the molecular level, a solid, we're jumping back to solids, have some movement. A liquid has more movement while a gas is everywhere. That explains why they do what they do. A solid, remember, definite shape, definite volume. It's because the molecules aren't moving that much. Okay, They're stuck kind of together. A liquid has more movement, so it's able to change its shape, but the volume still holds tight. It still holds it together. A gas, again, all bets are off. They're everywhere. So here is a summary of what we just talked about. You should be able to recreate this for your exam. The state of the matter, solids, liquids, and gases. The shape, solid, definite shape, definite volume. A liquid, no definite shape, a definite volume. A gas, no definite shape, and no definite volume. We can change the state of matter. These are called state changes. And it all involves either the addition or the removal of energy. When we add energy, the molecules get more and more crazy, more and more wild. Remember from the solids, solid, liquid, gas. We add energy, the solid will move more until it becomes a liquid. A liquid will move more until it becomes a gas. Pulling out that energy, gas slows it down to a liquid, pull out more energy, it turns it into a solid. So a state change involves the addition or the removal of energy. There are specific names for these changes. We have evaporation. We have all are familiar with evaporation. It goes from a liquid to a gas. So for example, if you boil water long enough, it turns into steam and the steam will eventually go away. The water will leave the container and you're left with nothing except the burnt pot. Condensation. This is glass sweat. If you've ever had a cold drink in a glass container or a plastic container on a hot day, it starts to bead water on the side. That's condensation. Water vapor, a gas, outside your cup makes contact with this very cold surface. The cold pulls the energy out. That's what cold is. It's less energy. It pulls the energy out going from a gas to a liquid. Freezing. Liquid to a solid. We all freeze ice. We freeze water. It turns into ice. It goes from a liquid to a solid. Melting. Solid to liquid. Deposition and sublimation are a little bit more odd. We're not familiar with those typically. Deposition goes from a gas to a solid. This is how we make dry ice. We take carbon dioxide and turn it into dry ice. And sublimation, it goes from a solid to a gas. So the dry ice goes from the solid into the gas, giving us that really cool, cheesy horror movie effect. That's going to conclude our states of matter. Come back and we're going to learn about atoms. <laughs>